One of the interesting things that happened against the Los Angeles Chargers was the Raiders' offensive line was shuffling around. Our right guard came out a couple times and replaced with our backup right guard. Our right tackle was replaced a couple times with the backup. And they all kind of went back and forth. And it's kind of interesting. Josh McDaniels was asked if he planned to somehow fix the offense line. Rather, they go out and go go uh, trade for a guy. Rather, they go out and sign a guy. Is Josh McDaniels looking to actually fix the Raiders offensive line? McDaniels quickly responded with, we're not searching for anything. He even implied that they are fine with just shuffling these guys around. In fact, Maurice Moten said that uh, he's not going to have Josh McDaniels make me believe the Raiders' ideal plan is to rotate players at right guard and right tackle. I want you guys to think about what Josh McDaniels believes the Raiders should do going forward. He believes that at right guard and right tackle, we're going to continue to shuffle our guys. Until one of these guys either sticks or maybe they just want to keep the guys fresh. In fact, I reached out to some of the Raiders' offensive linemen. I've had two guys respond, both tell me similar stories. To paraphrase, they both implied that Josh McDaniels has told some of the guys that we are going to move the right guard and right tackle and rotate them to keep them fresh, quote unquote, fresh. So I don't know exactly if that's Josh McDaniels' plan. I don't know if Jermaine Illumino or Dylan Parham weren't that great. That's why last year Cotton, the backup, came in. Darren Munford, the backup, came in. Or if it's really actually that, Josh McDaniels wants to keep them fresh. Now, I do want you guys to realize something. This isn't a new concept, or I shouldn't say this is This is not a one-off concept. The Chicago Bears did the same exact thing this past week. They rotated in Lucas Patrick at right guard for Tevin Jenkins, and those guys switched back and forth throughout the game. Now, I don't know exactly why you would do it instead of keeping guys consistently in there. Uh, maybe it's because one guy made a mistake and you kind of want to fire him up by removing him for a couple of plays. Either way, I think the Raiders' best plan forward should be to just put the two best guys in there and let them go. Now, I will say this. Uh, Dylan Parham started at right guard last week. He looked really good on tape. Minus one play in which Kenneth Murray blew him up, I did not see him lose any other rep. In fact, Dylan Parham was very consistent, and I plan to break his tape down probably a little bit later on today. Probably on my second channel, so if you guys aren't subscribed to that, go, go subscribe. It's called The Football Scout. Um, but it is interesting, nonetheless, what the Raiders plan to do with the offensive line. Uh, Andre James does have a concussion. He may not be ready against the Cardinals. So Dylan Parham may need to come in at center, which means Lester Cotton will likely start at right guard, which means we will not get that rotation going at right guard. Uh, of course, that's if, if James is not healthy. Either way, it is kind of interesting. I want to know what you guys think about it. In some other news, the Las Vegas Raiders were ranked 17th in ESPN's power rankings. And this blows my mind. You know, every single week, 16 teams lose and 16 teams win. Uh, there will be weeks when the Buffalo Bills lose. There will be weeks when the Kansas City Chiefs lose. Does that mean they should fall down in the power rankings? Like, for example, imagine if the Chiefs and the Bills play, which I do think they play later on this year. Imagine when one of those two teams loses. Does that mean the losing team is now a worse team? Like, did they get worse somehow? Like, you know, the Steelers going to jump one of those teams because they lost? Like, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me if you ask me. But ESPN now has lowered the Las Vegas Raiders. And they're pretty low already to begin with. You guys can see they're ranked as the 13th team coming in. Now they are ranked as the 17th team. ESPN believes that the Raiders are in the bottom half of of the teams, right? That there are at least 16 teams better. Now, we can just go up this list. Uh, you got the Colts ahead of the Raiders. The Colts tied. They technically didn't win either. And even the Broncos. And I watched the Broncos game last night. That team looks terrible. I get it. Maybe they'll step up. It's a new coach, but doesn't look good for them. The Steelers, 14th. The Saints, 13th. And I watched the Saints and Falcons game as well. And the Saints did absolutely nothing for the first half. And they looked absolutely terrible. And truth be told, they scored all the, most of their points on probably 10 to 12 plays. Like Taysom Hill had a massive uh, run, like 60 yards or so, uh, on three passes in the second half. Jameis Winston gets them downfield and they score a touchdown. That too, they're like 50-50 throws that the Saints obviously got. That too, 
the Falcons made some mistakes, and I don't know if the Saints are the 13th best team. I will say they have a good roster, but without a good quarterback, I don't know how you can be ranked that high. Um, the Dolphins are ranked 11th, the Vikings 10, the Eagles 9. I don't know. You know, are the Raiders the 17th ranked team? I don't think so. I think our talent is too good, and I get it. Derek Carr did not do a good job. But you can also say that maybe it's because they weren't ready. They weren't, they didn't take preseason reps. Derek Carr wasn't ready to get hit. He wasn't ready to get blitzed. The Chargers ran a great game plan. They blitzed Derek Carr. They blitzed the crap out of Derek Carr. Derwin James was coming every third play. He was blitzing off the edge. And our running backs got their asses kicked. And in my opinion, that forced Derek Carr to do some things he may not want, have wanted to do. Um, and of course, Derek Carr was a little rusty. He had some under throws. He had some passes that went behind his receivers. Either way, I don't think the Raiders are the 17th worst team. In some other news, the Raiders did claim some players. Actually, they claimed one player, which is Javin, Javelin Gidry. He is a cornerback. Uh, do note that Anthony Averett was placed on the IR, which is unfortunate. Um, Anthony Averett will now be out for, I believe, four games, uh, which kind of sucks because he looked pretty good. The, the couple of plays he was in there, uh, he was knocked out pretty early, I believe, but uh, it does suck because he was our he's he's our third corner. Let's just be honest, right? He is the third guy, and we need our corners. Like we're already thin. We've only kept five corners. Yeah, right? we didn't keep the six or seven that most teams keep. We kept five corners, and we lost one. We had four left, so we went out and we claimed uh, Javelin Goodry, who comes from um, most recently, I believe he was with the Cardinals, but. Uh, he was with the Jets prior to that. In 2020 and 2021, he was with the Jets. And I believe he was with the Cardinals this, this offseason. And they obviously uh, did not keep him around. I believe they, they waived him right after week one. Um, either way, Javelin Gittery has played uh, 17 games last year. Uh, he played in all 17 of them. He started a couple. But the guy who's an okay cornerback. We'll see if he can produce for the Raiders. Uh, at this point, he's really going to be the replacement in my opinion, where we don't have to rely on Amik Robertson. Now, I don't think Sam Webb's ready to play right away, but if you give me the option between Amik Robertson and Sam Webb, I take Sam Webb. I don't know why Patrick Graham decided to keep Amik Robertson. We talked about this in the uh, in the preseason, that we were surprised that Amik Robertson was, was kept around. Amik Robertson got beat for a touchdown last week, and we got lucky that our, our superstar defensive end, Max Crosby, hit the quarterback, and the ball fell short, way short. But the receiver was wide open in the back of the end zone because Amik Robertson got straight burned right off, off the line of scrimmage, and it would have been a touchdown, and we got lucky. But my point is, is I don't know why Amik Robertson was kept around. I think Trayvon Mullen would have been the better option. Of course, I get it. Mullen's never healthy, but... Meek Robertson does not make sense, man. Uh, hopefully, Javelin Gidry could could have some sort of impact for the Raiders. I know I'm butchering his name. I will get that right. Uh, but finally, I want to talk about some, some an article that I saw. Uh, Devontae Adams delivered in the Las Vegas Raiders de debut. We all know that fact, right? But the All-Pro needs help. Paul Gutierrez of ESPN wrote this, that the All-Pro needs help. Now, of course, uh, Paul Gutierrez is talking about the fact that Devontae Adams needs help from his quarterback. He needs help from his other receivers. Uh, but, you know, this, this kind of got me thinking. Like, how much more do the Raiders need to add in order for, their, for them to have success? Like, is Devontae Adams, Darren Waller, Hunter Renfro, Josh Jacobs, are those four guys not enough? Because most people agree. All four of them are top five to top ten at their respective positions. I think Devontae Adams is a top three to five wide receiver. And I say that to uh, leave room for guys like Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson. You know, you guys can rank them however you want. Really not a massive difference. I, I think they're all absolutely dominant players. Uh, you can say Adams is the best. and I, I wouldn't disagree. You can say Adams is the fourth best. And I wouldn't disagree because the other guys are guys like Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, Cooper Cup. Uh, they're all superstar players. Uh, so you can say that the Raiders have top five to top four guys at top five to top 10 at their position Adams as an outside receiver Hunter Renfro as a slot receiver Darren Waller as a tight end Josh Jacobs as a running back top five to ten all of them but do the Raiders need more help than that you know one of the things that I actually talked about in the offseason was that the Raiders Achilles heels is going to be the offensive line the Raiders issues will be 
the offensive line, right? And it's not that the offensive line is so terrible. That's that's not the issue. The issue comes down to the fact that Derek Carr has terrible pocket presence, his top, terrible pocket awareness, and those are things that are that are fact, right? Like we we've talked about this multiple times, and we're not going to really talk about that. We're not going to really get into that part of it. But when your offensive line is not very good, how do you overcome a quarterback that just doesn't want to get out of the pocket? And I get it. You know, you can tag me in one or two plays that Derek Carr actually gets out of the pocket and actually makes a, a play. But the thing is, is if you guys watch the, the great quarterbacks, and I know, you know, I know it's not fair to say to compare Derek Carr to guys like uh, Patrick Mahomes and Aaron Rodgers. But the thing is, is at what point do we say that if Derek Carr is not getting out of the pocket every four plays or so, and I know Josh McDaniel says he doesn't want Derek Carr to get out of the pocket. I think that I think Josh McDaniels is just saying stuff, right? And I really think he's just saying it just to say it because I think he sees the narrative that's trending within Raider Nation, within the fan base. Um, I because I find it hard to believe that Josh McDaniels doesn't want Derek Carr to an extend to extend a play if needed. Um, but at what point do we say what we have? is not enough or if it is enough all right at what point do we say Devonte adams was not a good investment instead maybe we should have got a right tackle and a left guard at what point does it come down to that we say the raiders made a mistake i, I get it it's just one game right it's, it really doesn't matter it's the first game of the season one of the best teams in the league uh, truth be told if we come out against Cardinals and we put up 40 points and at the same time they have like, you know, they score like 21 and we blow them out. We're not even going to think twice about this first game because we're going to realize how great our offense is relative to the fact that the Chargers have one of the best defensive lines, one of the best defensive minds in their coach, Brandon Staley. I think he's a terrible coach as a head coach, but he's a great defensive coordinator. Maybe the Raiders just played a really good team, right? But this article definitely got me thinking, like, do the Raiders need more to win? Because, you know, the truth is, is we're not going to have a lot of money to spend in free agency at this point going forward. A lot of our guys will be guys that we draft. They'll be replacing, like, you know, if Jonathan Abram doesn't resign, we'll draft a safety and it'll be a rookie safety coming in. But our core players, the Chandler Jones, the Max Crosby's, um, potentially uh, guys like Divine Diablo, if they, you know, if they're here, obviously we'll, we'll see. Um, but we'll get a lot of replacement guys. So will that be enough to help not even Devontae Adams and Derek Carr, but like just this team to have success? It is kind of interesting. Obviously, you know, kind of get off track here and start ranting a little bit. But, uh, you know, sometimes you got to do that, right? Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, man. I, I wanted to kind of talk about a couple different subjects. You guys know this video, it will be titled Raiders News, and we get into a bunch of different segments, a bunch of different topics. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, man. I, I am going to do the Dylan Parham video. In fact, uh, probably within the next 30 minutes, I'll have this video uploaded, posted, and I will start on that Parham video because I really want to break this tape down. The guy looked good, man. Thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time with another video.